Okay, so diabetic traction retinal detachments are by far my favorite type of case, and it's because they are just so diverse and different. And this is a patient that had a really bad plaque across the macula. I would start most of these diabetic TRDs by basically dissecting away any anterior vitreous traction from the posterior traction. And this just gets me comfortable in the eye, kind of just helps me to get a feel for how the patient's going to do, let the patient wake up a little bit from anesthesia, and give me some time to think about how we're going to attack this plaque. It also decreases any peripheral traction that you may have, and most of the time what you'll find is that mid-peripheral vitreous will be lifted up. Once I've got most of that mid-peripheral vitreous lifted up, uh, I'll start to work on the back of the eye here. And, and really, I just try to go for the easiest locations that I possibly can to try and start my segmentation. And I mostly segment... Uh, chandelier light's really critical in these cases if you're going to do any bimanual surgery. I thought this one might need bimanual surgery and in fact didn't need bimanual surgery. Uh, it's amazing how much this 25 gauge 10,000 cut per minute beveled cutter can actually do on its own. And I'm just simply um, applying aspiration and cut uh, over these areas of vitreous traction and anything that's lifted up really gets um, eaten away by the cutter without any damage to the underlying retina. I try to leave any hemorrhage, as we can see here, alone. I don't want to stir that up in the eye. But if I do, I try to stay right on it and get it all out of there so I get my good visualization. Uh, I go in with some forceps. These are the max grip forceps. And I'm just going to peel away um, this fibrotic tissue. And so you can see, got lucky there that it popped up. I was peeling against the optic nerve. So if you peel away from that optic nerve, you know that's at least one focal area that although there might be neovascularization of the disc, there's going to be um, a firm attachment point for you to pull off of. Now, when I pulled that up, I could actually see that there was space between this fibrotic plaque and the underlying retina. And I want to find those areas of space. Here I'm using my cutter as a forcep. And the nice thing about this is, is that it will release before it pulls and tears the retina in all likelihood. I'm using a little bit of a forehanded technique and then also a backhanded technique where I'm actually moving the cutter backwards over the fibrotic plaque. Here's the forehanded technique, segmenting. I know there's space there because when I lifted up that uh, fibrotic tissue, I could see that there was room underneath there. Here I'm using it as a forcep again and peeling it off. And now I know there's space and I find this, this basically crevice that I can go through and segment. Now look at how beautiful this cutter just removes that fibrotic tissue while leaving the underlying retina intact. And this is that last little piece and it's always the last little piece that gets you here and I probably should have just left this alone uh, but I'm bound and determined to try and get this area um, up and so I, a very dangerous move right here is I put my cutter face down and cut against this fibrotic tissue. I would not advise this. Uh, I just really simply got lucky on this one um, that I didn't do any damage to the underlying retina. So uh, always applying the PRP laser treatment. Uh, and then I always like to leave these patients under gas or air. Uh, it just helps with wound closure, I feel, helps that retina that's all folded up to perhaps uh, unfurl and look a little more natural and then decreases the potential for hemorrhage to recur. Thank you again for watching.